Good morning. It's 8.30 on Thursday, May 8th. I'm Desiree Frazier. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. On today's show, we sit down for part two of our conversation with Merle Evers-Williams about her life and dedication to civil rights. Then, Mississippi's leading infectious disease expert, who coordinated statewide testing during the COVID-19 pandemic, announces his retirement. Plus, a look back at how a ballet teacher made Mississippi the home of the International Ballet Competition. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. Merle Evers-Williams, wife of civil rights icon Megger Evers, is returning to the home where her husband was gunned down 60 years ago. Her anticipated attendance is part of a rededication of the house by the National Park Service this morning. In part two of our conversation, we discuss the impact of racial discrimination and the path towards reconciliation. For those of us, all races, creeds, and colors, who accept the fact that there is still the ugliness of racial destruction and separation and all that it brings with it, that you cannot stop with a movement. That movement has to keep going. Not necessarily in the same way, but we have to be aware that it is something that must continue to grow in able to ensure all of us, the next generation or so, how to work together to survive. And I think that's what we are talking about. I don't want to survive, just survive. I want to live. I think we have to be aware of that in whatever it is that we do, wherever we work. No, we smile and say, all right, that was the 50s, that was the 60s. We don't have that now. You're darn right we do still have prejudice and racism and hatred. It's not nice to say, but it's still there. Who will take responsibility to each one of us should in whatever little way we can? Every Mississippian? That's the ideal. We know we aren't going to hit the ideal, not any time soon anyway. But you continue to work. You, continue, you don't give up. You don't brush it aside and say, oh, that was in the 60s. How do you want Megger Evers to be remembered? How would you like for people to think of him when they hear his name? Medgar Evers was a strong and determined man who worked and gave his life for the total and complete freedom of his people and for the total freedom of all people who work and live in their communities for peace and equality. I want America to be remembered as a man that he was. I've had painful reflections on that time, painful reflections on what I have done and have not done, painful reflections on what this country is today and what it was then, and where do we go from here. I mean, that was King's thing. What? Where do we go from here? I still don't know. I have hope. I have dreams. I just celebrated my 90th birthday. Knees say, stay still. (laughs) The back says, don't you dare try. The heart says, get on out there and do it, girl. And the brain says, I will kick you in you-know-what if you try. So which part of the body do I answer? Huh? Well, you look good, and hmm? you do- you look good, and you're doing good. 
You're very kind. I will accept that because I need it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I do not believe in giving up. I don't believe in giving up. So any small way I can be involved, I try to do that. I support my daughter in her activities, and God, she's so much like her dad. I worry about her because I believe she gets too involved and doesn't take care of herself. But she tells me, don't worry, Mom, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> During your time here, you've been back to the house and you're going to be going back to your home in Jackson again. How does that resonate with you? How do you feel about that? Thankful to be able to go back. I have been back, was it a few days ago? Uh, a little difficult. Was the memories brought in and met good efforts. Who the love of my life comes alive. And walking in that Patio, I relive everything from a car pulling into the driveway, my children screaming, that's daddy, that's daddy. Rushing to the door when they had been instructed never to do that. They were so excited that daddy was at home. They rushed to the door, by golly. Such land. The kids did exactly what their dad taught them to do. Ran screaming to the door, opened the door, and there was a love of my life. Mortally wounded. You never forget anything like that. It's just as strong with me today as I think it was then. I don't know. I think of it too much. I really do, but it's a passing, it's a passing thing. And it's interesting that it comes when I need the strength to do something else. I mean, in the community, we're not related to that. In the community means United States as such. I relive that night, I think, as well as I did when it happened. It's never left. Maybe that's good, isn't it? No, and that's to be expected. Yeah, but it gives me strength. And excuse my language, it gives me strength to kick ass. I found it a very healthy return. Healthy in the sense that I found a strength within myself. And I have to say it was a god place strength. To go back to the home where there had been so much love and care in our family, and to relive the horrors of living there on a daily basis. And of course, the most extreme was my husband, the love of my life being shot down in the carport of our home. I still get angry. But that anger turns into a strength to survive, even today, after all these years. Survival, after pain and suffering from my husband being shot down and killed. And door. surviving well. well. Not just surviving, but thriving. Well, I remember what Medgar told me in those last days, I told him, I can't make it without you. And he told me, you're stronger than you think you are. Merle Evers Williams, as she mentioned, is 90 years old. She's being honored today at a brunch in Jackson for her commitment to human rights. Coming up, Mississippi state epidemiologist who navigated the state through the pandemic 
is retiring. We'll have more on that. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. MPB Think Radio. Whatever your taste, news, music, storytelling, or how-to shows. Whatever your city, Natchez, Jackson, Tupelo, Cleveland. However you want. Radio, smart speaker, smartphone app. MPB Think Radio. On Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, you get information about foods you should eat to stay in good health and tips on how to stay active. I'm Josie Bidwell, host of Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit and Associate Professor of Preventive Medicine at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Listen to the show every Monday at 11 or subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy with your preferred podcasting app. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. I'm Desiree Frazier. Mississippi State epidemiologist Dr. Paul Byers is retiring at the end of this month. Dr. Byers played a crucial role throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and reportedly worked late hours and weekends helping his staff test for the disease around the clock. His advice also helped hospitals and businesses across the state find safe ways to continue operating during the crisis. Our Michael Guidry speaks with him about his time in the healthcare field and how the pandemic changed the game. We've been through significant challenges before where we've had to basically pull all hands on deck and pull people who work at the health department into new responsibilities as we address whatever is the new public health concern or public health crisis. One of the things that we knew early on with COVID, it was going to be a challenge and that it was going to have significant impact on the U.S. and on Mississippians. So we knew that it was going to be hard. One of the biggest challenges was how long We had to really be involved in those intensive efforts for, it feels like, a couple of years at least. There was not a whole lot that I did in those 18-hour days plus that did not involve COVID-19 or the response to it. And I think that the length of that response, we've been involved in responses before where we can throw resources at it and in four months, in six months, we see things winding down. We just did not see that with COVID. It was a new challenge every time we turned a corner. And that length of time and that intensive response certainly took its toll. We are at a point now where we are uh, uh, having opportunities to address other public health needs in the state since we've seen, uh, thankfully, COVID-19 start to to diminish somewhat. Uh, What did the pandemic teach us and tell us or reveal to us uh, about the state of public health and the public health ecosystem, both in Mississippi and and nationally in the United States? Well, I I think first and foremost, if, if we think about lessons learned from the pandemic is that we have demonstrated that we do have resiliency. We've, we've known that for, for quite some time with other challenges that we faced. I think by and large, Mississippians are responsive to to recommendations and responsive to the need for for public health measures like vaccination with an understanding that, you know, when you get vaccinated, not only does it help you, but it helps protect those people in our population that are most vulnerable. And I think that, that we saw many Mississippians rise to that occasion. So I think it was encouraging to see that. The rapid development of a COVID-19 vaccine that was based on technology that's been in works for the prior decade. You know, we were able to marshal that same technology to develop a targeted, safe, effective vaccine. And I think what we're gonna see with that mRNA technology that was used for the vaccine is that this is going to have wider applications. Perhaps we move into some seasonality and expand mRNA technology with vaccines into other vaccines. And I think that the pandemic taught us 
about those exciting prospects. I think another thing that it taught us, especially from a public health standpoint, and we knew this for a long time, is that when we have a new or emerging disease, we're not going to have all the answers right away. We're going to make the best recommendations that we can based on the information that we have. You know, at times, public health came under fire because it seemed like one day you're saying mask work. The next day you say they don't. But what that is, is you actually got to witness the process. As we learn more, we have to be willing to be flexible and to use public health recommendations that are based on the best scientific evidence that we have at the time. Also looking at this this kind of characterization of Mississippi uh, as having an epidemic of epidemics outside of the coronavirus. You know, the CDC, I know, nationally continues to warn about MPOX. Dr. Thomas Dobbs, who served as epidemiologist before serving as, as public health officer, has since been very outspoken about congenital syphilis. You know, the, the state is also uh, faces uh, kind of an uphill climb as far as HIV transmission. What is the role of public health, conti- the continued role of public health, when it comes to managing these other epidemics that you know could possibly be afterthoughts following such a massive pandemic like the coronavirus? We have a lot of challenges. Um, I think we're going to continue to have some challenges. And one of the biggest roles of the Department of Health is to inform, sure that the public and that healthcare providers are aware with the data that we have, who's at risk, what the problem is, and present this as opportunities. And and with each one of these situations you described, we have opportunities for improvement. Uh, I think we've been doing a good job of that. I think we've got more work to do. Dr. Paul Byers is the outgoing state epidemiologist. He retires at the end of the month. Coming up, an international ballet competition is being held in Jackson. We speak with the authors of a book about the woman who started it all. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. The MPB Public Media app just got an update. It's now easier than ever to interact with your favorite MPB local shows and experts. With the brand new Talk To Us feature, you can engage with your favorite MPB local shows anytime, day or night, directly through the app. Simply select Talk To Us from the MPB Public Media app's menu. There, you can leave a question, share show ideas, or simply just say hello. With the new Talk To Us feature, you have access to your favorite MPB local shows and experts anytime you want to talk. Hello, I'm Dr. Nancy Lotridge anderson president of New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advising firm and co-host of Money Talks. For over 10 years, Money Talks has been answering your personal financial questions and sharing knowledge about money management. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org, or on your smart device's podcasting platform. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. I'm Desiree Frazier. Dancers from around the world are in Jackson this month to participate in the international ballet competition at historic Thalia Mara Hall. The competition first began in the late 1970s when Thalia Mara, a famed ballet educator, chose to host it in Jackson. Author Carolyn Brown is the writer of To Dance to Live, a biography of Thalia Mara. We sit down with her and collaborator Carla Walt to discuss the ways Thalia Mara changed Mississippi and the world of ballet. I was curious about her life story. Carla knew her. And um, we thought it was important to let Mississippians know who she was. And yes, she is associated, of course, with bringing the International Ballet Competition here in the U.S. to Jackson, Mississippi um, in 1979. But she had a whole life before that as she was 65 when that actually happened, when she came to Jackson. her She had a whole life in dance as a ballerina on stage in Europe, South America, uh, across North America and Canada. She was a dance teacher for many, many years. And she's from Russia. She was from Russia. Her, her, you go ahead. Uh, her mother was from Russia, uh, and I think her father had some Russian background, but her mother 
the mother's father sent his children to England when the political landscape in Russia in the early 20th. Uh, 20th century, excuse me, was not something he felt like was a good place or safe for them. So they were in England for a short time, and then she and her brother came to the United States and uh, ended up in Chicago, which is where Thalia is born. What was it about her that stood out? <laughs> a lot of things stood out about Thalia. She was, uh, as Carolyn mentioned earlier, she was a dancer, of course. She was a renowned and recognized arts educator and teacher. And Thalia was a visionary. That's a word people throw around some, but truly she was. Not only do we see that here in Mississippi as she comes and realizes that she needs they need more to bring ballet forward but her whole life you will see this in schools that she starts in the way she decides to educate dance teachers and also later in forming a school for ballet but also one that was academic she lived in new york she got married she lived in new york how did she end up in mississippi Thalia and had been running or had been in charge of a school, the National Academy of Dance in New York. And it comes to a close in is it 1973 because of funding, always an issue for the arts. But she had actually gone out and secured public funding from New York as well as private funding. But that will come to an end. So the school closes. Two years later, in 1975, or close to that, the Jackson Ballet is looking for a new director. They hire her to be executive director. To be the artistic artistic director director of the Jackson Ballet. Uh, Yes. And at this point, she is older. She's 65 years old, like Carolyn said. And she has come across the country to a place that she does not know. She does not know anyone. She and her husband had separated earlier, so she's literally coming on her own. And the rest is history, as they say. Do you know what year she came here? Yeah, 1975. Do you think she had any misgivings because of the history of the state? I do not. And I write in the book that she was very excited about coming to Jackson because she saw support for the ballet from other arts organizations in the city. So the symphony and other, uh, the museum and the opera. And one of the lessons we want readers to take from the book is that she was a patron of all the arts and she felt if you had a strong dance company you'll have a strong symphony right you'll have a strong opera company every arts organization is going to be stronger for the other one and she saw that support when she interviewed and and heard from people at that time from the other arts organizations in Jackson. What stood out for you in writing this book about her? I've written five other biographies of Mississippi women, four other. This is my fifth. And I think every time I write one of these books, I'm amazed by the dedication and commitment that woman has for their passion. So for Margaret Walker and Eudora Welty, it was for writing. And for Kate Freeman Clark, it was painting. And for Thalia Mara, it was dance and dance education. And it's a lifetime of dedication. It's tracing it back to their childhood and, you know, some moment in their childhood that committed them to that that art they lived for the rest of their lives. And also what connects Welty Walker and Mara is they lived the entirety of the 20th century, which is really interesting because you can follow their life along in terms of historical decades and how each decade or period affected them and their work. Carla Brown and Carla Wall, or rather Carolyn Brown and Carla Wall, authors of the book To Dance to Live, a biography of Thalia Mara. This has been Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. Stick around for a full morning of Mississippi programming. Coming up at 9, it's Creature Comforts. Then at 10, it's Auto Correct. And at 11, don't miss Southern Remedy. Find past installments of this and other Think Radio shows online at mpbonline.org. I'm Desiree Frazier. Join us tomorrow morning at 8.30 for the next Mississippi Edition, only on MPB Think Radio. 
Have a wonderful day.